1 Kings chapter 18 teaches us the importance of worshiping the one true God, and it also gives us unique insight into the ancient worship of other gods. This chapter describes how Hezekiah enacted a reformation of sorts in Israel by directing all worship to Yahweh, or Jehovah, and eliminating the worship of other gods. In verse 4, it details the specific things he abolished in his ritual cleansing. He removed the high places, and he smashed the stone pillars, and he cut down the poles of Asherah worship and demolished the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For up to these days, the Israelites were offering incense to it and called it Nehushtan. Each of these items represent the worship of different gods in Canaan and surrounding regions. They also represent different aspects of nature. By Hezekiah destroying each of these items, he demonstrated Yahweh's superiority over all of the elements, earth, plants, animals, and man-made structures. When we talk about the beliefs of ancient Israel, we often talk about it in terms of monotheism. Monotheism denotes the belief in one, mono, God, and it's the opposite of polytheism, which constitutes a belief in many, or poly, gods. Another term to describe ancient Israelites might be monolatry, which describes worshiping one God, even if you acknowledge the existence of others. Ancient Israel was only supposed to worship Jehovah or Yahweh, even if their world was filled with these seemingly powerful gods from these surrounding cultures. When Hezekiah saw that Israel was turning to worship other gods, he took measures to focus worship on the one true God, Jehovah. He did this by destroying the symbols of worship of some of the prominent gods in the area. He destroyed the high places, the stone pillars, the Asherah poles, and the Nehushtan. The first item the verse mentions are high places. These were likely some kind of elevated cultic shrine to a god. Since Hezekiah sought to centralize worship at the Jerusalem temple, unauthorized shrines, even if they were to Jehovah, were eliminated. These shrines were called high places because religious worship often took place on hills, mountains, or high places. Mountains could represent getting closer to a god in heaven, and it could represent that first primordial mound of land that emerged from the waters of chaos in creation. Hezekiah also smashed these stone pillars, which were likely some form of altar or cultic stand for offering incense or sacrifice. Like the high places, worshiping other gods at these sites was forbidden by Hezekiah. Hezekiah cut down the poles of Asherah, which were likely cultic objects meant to venerate the Canaanite goddess Asherah. There's evidence that this fertility goddess was worshipped in the land of Israel using tree imagery. This goddess was often worshipped using either objects like poles that represented trees or among natural groves of trees. The Nehushtan is a curious object because this is the only place where it's mentioned. The verse explains that this religious relic was the brazen serpent that Moses fashioned in the wilderness to heal the Israelites of the bites of the fiery serpents. The word nechushtan is likely related to the Hebrew word for brass, nechoshet, which is also related to the word for serpent, nechash. What was originally a symbol of healing and salvation had apparently turned into an object of worship since the Israelites were burning incense to it. In each of these items, Hezekiah showed the superiority of the God of Israel over the gods of the Canaanites. Jehovah is lord over the mountaintops and the earth, as represented by destroying the high places. He is lord over the plants and trees reflected in the Asherah poles. He's supreme over the animals and the serpents, as represented by the destruction of the Nehushtan. And he's lord over stones hewn by man, reflected in the destruction of the stone pillars. So regardless of what other gods may have existed or have been worshipped in ancient Israel, Scripture is unanimous in the importance of worshipping God the Father, the God of the whole earth and of all creation. Elder Razband explained, The Savior taught his disciples, Always pray unto the Father in my name. We follow this pattern and direct our worship to our Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus Christ. It can be tempting to turn to any belief system, ideal, or deity into an idol if we're not careful. We can trust that if we center our worship on the Lord, he ultimately will triumph over all other influences.